30 years ago, I answered an ad in the Atlanta newspaper, and I thought I was taking a job, but I was changing my life. I was joining a movement, a cause, something great. I thought I'd get a paycheck, but what I got was so much more. When I think about whatever positive I've become, a lot of it is because I got to meet this man. We are. We're a company of destiny. Our company is built on the rock of truth. At a time when it was unpopular, this man fired the missiles of freedom at a wall of deception. I mean, I was a football coach, graduated in college uh, with a PE degree. The kind of person that's not supposed to make it, you know, in business. And I found out a lot of things about winning in business, the real important things to winning in business. You know, a lot of these people that write books that ain't ever done nothing, but they try to tell you how to do it. Coaches motivate. Bosses look for your weakness. Coaches look for your strengths. Bosses criticize you. Coaches praise you. The number one thing that we had in A.O. Williams was I want to be somebody. I want to be somebody. Those five little words were important to those A.O. Williams people. It hit a nerve for anybody that wanted to make a difference with their life. There was a goodness in A.O. Williams. There was a goodness that drew the right kind of people to us. We believed you had a responsibility to do what's right. We believed your reputation was everything. If you don't do what's right, you, get, you might get by for one day, one week, one month, one year, but sooner or later they're going to smell you out. A.L. Williams believed that character was more important than education. We believed that morals was more important than status. We cared more about determination than ability. People who joined A.O. Williams saw that we were built for people that had grew up tough, for people that had had a number of disappointments in their life. My first year in business, my long range goal was to build financial independence for me and my family. And my short range goals to punish myself till I got there was I, for Monday through Friday, my goal was to have five sales and three recruits Monday through Friday. If I met that goal, then I took off on Saturday and Sunday and spent it with my family. If I didn't make that those goals by Friday, I worked on Saturday. If I didn't make it by Saturday, I worked on Sunday. Folks, there's no easy way to the top. You've got to reward and punish yourself. Uh, to be a great leader, you've got to be a great motivator. Always remember the most powerful form of motivation is praise and recognition. In the early days of A.O. Williams, we didn't have any money and we became famous for our t-shirts. 
I would go out and spend two and a half dollars on a t-shirt and I'd put, I am a stud, I am somebody, play like a champion, just do it. I've literally seen grown men and women cry at a meeting that were making two and three hundred thousand dollars a year, not get one of those little two and a half dollar t-shirt. They would go back to their room. They couldn't sleep at night. They'd beat their head against the wall and cry all night. See, folks, you're never too old and you're never too young to be praised and recognized. People are starving in this world today for recognition. It's the most powerful form of motivation in the world. Let me give you an example that just happened to us. In Highlands, North Carolina, where we spend the summer, we own an inn and a spa called Old Edwards Inn up there, and we built an indoor swimming pool for the city, a really beautiful indoor swimming pool. And uh, they have a swimming coach from Clemson. I met a Clemson guy in here a while ago. But a Clemson swimmer is the swimming coach uh, at, at Highlands, North Carolina right now. Four years ago, they had four people on their swim team. So we build this beautiful indoor swimming pool. And I said, coach, I want to put a wall of fame board on the end of the uh, swimming pool down here. And he said, uh, coach, uh, they called me coach, said, coach, don't you think that they're a little too young? you know, eight, 10 year, 12 years, 15 year old kid. I said, you don't get too young. You can't ever motivate kids enough, right? <laughs> hey, this year, four years later, four years to get on that wall of fame, you had to go to the junior Olympics. You had to go to the junior Olympics. Last year was in Detroit, Michigan. We had 66 swimmers come out for the swim team and we have 12 swimmers go to the Junior Olympics and get their name on the, wa on, on the wall of fame. You can't, if you want to win in this business, if you want to win in this world, in business, you've got to become an expert on praise and motivation. See, I believe, I believe being somebody is being an example and a doer, not just a thinker and a talker. I own an inn in Spa, Highlands, North Carolina, Old Edwards Inn, like I said. And I want all of our employees to feel like a family, to feel important like we tried to do at A.O. Williams. Let me just give you four examples. I instructed all our 500 employees to call me Art or call me Coach, not Mr. Williams. I told each one of them, I said, you're much more important in this business than I am. And number three, I don't want to see teammates shaking hands. You don't do that to a teammate. Somebody you go to work with every day, for heaven's sake, shake the darn hands. I want you to give them a high five or I want you to hug them. I want Old Edwards to become a hugging company. And I would go around every week. Every week I do this. Every week. And I give every leader, every leader in Old Edwards, a cookie or a piece of candy and just hug them and tell them I love them and tell them I appreciate them. See, I wanted to create an, env an, an environment where we are a family, you're my teammate, you're my friend. And you know what? You, you know what? what? See, it's not the cookie. It's not the candy. It's not the letter that was important. It was my heart. It was me showing our people that they're important to me, that they're special to me, that they're special to this company. See, folks, I believe the difference in being a somebody and being a nobody is people that are somebodies have a special kind of belief in themselves. They have a change the world kind of desire and determination. Their attitude is bring it on. The tougher, the better. They understand you don't get, get what you want or what you'd love to have. Life gives you what you'll accept. I had a coach, my only hero in life, where there was somebody important to me. My only hero in life was my high school coach. In every way, I was just a little bit better than average athlete, just a little bit better than average student. But Coach Taylor saw something in me I didn't know I had. Coach Taylor made me feel like I'd do something important in my life. He made me feel like I was different, that I was special, that I would make a difference with my life. I found out one thing about life. Nobody has ever accomplished anything significant on their own. Think about this, folks. 
Nobody has ever accomplished anything significant on their own. They always had somebody, some one person, some adult like Coach Taylor to me who cared about them, who saw something special in them, who believed in them. I wanted to be that someone at A.O. Williams. I wanted to be that someone that was always there in the toughest times, encouraging them, fighting with them, pushing them forward, never giving up on them. I wanted to be that someone that was willing to invest time one-on-one, building relationships, building friendships that would last a lifetime. Well, nothing good comes easy. All I ever wanted to do as a young boy was be a football coach. Now stamp this in your brain. My first head coaching job was in a town that hadn't had a winning season in 20 years. The last two years had won one game and and lost 19. I went to all the clubs around town. I went to the school. I said, we're through losing. I guarantee I'm a winner and we're going to win beginning this year. I had 75 players come out for spring practice After one week, we were down to 17 or 18 players. I lost my first two quarterbacks. We were going to have a spring game against last year's old sorry seniors that had won one game in two years. Only time I ever did this, never did it again. And uh, they came up Thursday and I issued them uniforms. They hadn't practiced. We'd been practicing for four weeks. I thought we'd beat them a hundred and nothing. The whole town comes out. They were going to see the savior of the football program, you know, and they were excited. And I sit there on the 50 yard line. I said, this is going to be a joke. We're going to beat them like a drum. And they beat us. And I got lower and lower. And I said, my life's over. There's no way I can recover from this. Who would hire a football coach like me? And I went home and I cried and I moped around all weekend. And then Sunday afternoon, I looked in the mirror and I was ashamed of Art Williams. I said, shame on you. Yeah, you're playing in a tough league. Yeah, you only got 17 or 18 kids, but they believed in you. And they did everything you asked. And, and, and I called the next morning, I went up to the principal's office and I got on the intercom system and I called all the football players down to the gym. And I said, fellas, when I came here, I told you this was the greatest opportunity of our life because nobody except the town and the school thinks we're going to win. As great as I thought it was, it's a hundred times greater today because nobody, even our town and our school, don't think we're going to win. The only people that think we're going to win are the people in this room. And I know how to win and I'm going to teach you how to win. The first thing I did, greatest thing I ever did in my life, my business life or my coaching life, is I brought each one of those players in and I started talking to them about their goals and their dreams and what they wanted to do and how much football meant to them. And and, and I found out something unbelievable that I was looking at most of these kids and say it and comparing them to some of the kids I'd coached before at a better football school. And I was looking at them at at, at what they didn't have. And, 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 And I said, wow, every one of these kids, they have some good stuff. They have some good stuff. And I started at that moment, folks, I started praising their strengths and not criticizing their weaknesses. And all that ragtag bunch of players did was give me the greatest coaching thrill of my life. Six months later, on that same field where those SAR seniors beat us, we beat the number one team in the state of Georgia. 